the eAssist Dental Solutions Podcast. We are the nation's leader in outsourced dental billing. Our clients require highly skilled dental office managers that can consult with client offices. Welcome to the eAssist Dental Solutions Podcast. I am Andre Quintana and I am in my studio in North Carolina. So excited to be with you today. And I just want to remind ESS Nation out there that a podcast can be downloaded and heard at any time as you're working, doing your power walk, your jog, whatever it is you're doing, you could be listening to us. And the reason I remind you of that is because we have such a special guest. And I will bring her in in just a second, but I have to just say something about her. She is Penny Reed of Penny Reed and Associates, and also growing your dental business. We're going to get more into that, but before I delay any longer, I want to bring in your dental speaker, author, and coach, Miss Penny Reed. Penny, how are you today? I am fantastic. The sun is shining. I'm getting to talk to you. I mean, what could be better? What could be better? And we are right around Thanksgiving. And I just want to open up by saying two things. Well, one is I am thankful for you coming on the show, the eAssist Dental Solutions Podcast. Just go to eAssist.com or dentalbilling.com. But the other thing that I want to do is have you say hello to eAssist Nation. How about that? Fantastic. Hello, eAssist Nation. <laughs> that was great. One of the best I've ever had. So, Penny, you know, there's so much about you that I can't say. It'll take me forever. I'm sure you have a better way of introducing yourself. So how about you let everybody know who you are and what you do? Awesome. Thank you. So uh, as you mentioned before, wow, just so elegantly, I am a practice management coach, speaker, and author. Uh, I became a dental office manager is how I wound up in the business of dentistry. My dentist, I had come back in town for a family visit and was actually moving back to the Memphis, Tennessee area. Um, I had been in management with a little company called the Walmart Corporation uh, in IT and then in their stores. And Anyway, we bumped into each other and he said, hey, I would love to take you to lunch. And so we met for lunch and he basically offered me a job to come and manage his practice, which I laughed and I said, um, I don't know how to run a dental office. I mean, at Walmart, we have books and manuals and I had all this training and I basically executed what they told me to do, you know, not that I didn't have to think at all, but it, it wasn't something that I created. And he laughed. He said, well, I really didn't have a lot of training on how to run my practice either, but I, I know that you work hard and that you'll figure things out if you don't know them and would love for you to come on board. So my cheesy joke that I tell is I thought, wow, you know, he sees patients Monday through Thursday. I'd come in on some Fridays to do administrative things, but no nights, no weekends, no stress. All right. That's where we can cue the canned laughter because we know we know that uh, working in and running a dental practice can be stressful even when it's run well uh, because we're, you're working on patients, you're working with people, often they're in pain, or sometimes your teammates are a pain, right? I mean, it's just you get all those uh, people together in a, in a small business and uh, sometimes we get a little bit too much of each other. Uh, but what really made me want to become a consultant is we were looking for resources. He and I, he had opened up his books to me. He had a, what I would call the old fashioned version of a spreadsheet. It was a big ledger book that had numbers in it. And he had been tracking them every year, what he'd produced, what he'd collected, various expense categories, and then what the net was. And because I'd known his family for years, you know, this was almost like I had been invited into the family and the practice was growing. His income had been growing, but it had sort of plateaued, even though the practice was still growing. And I thought, well, that doesn't make any sense. His income should be growing too. And so we, we worked on some things for a couple of months and 
you know, we were doing a little bit better, but I said, is there any place we can go or learn any, you know, any books other than your Perio textbook, which was the book that he gave me when I asked for a book on how to run the practice. It was rather amusing <laughs> that that was the only book we had. And so we went to a seminar by a consulting group and we all decided as a team that that would be a great thing to do. And I just had no idea that anything like that existed right? That there was a way I'd never, I didn't even know what a consultant was. I mean, I was in my early twenties. So we began to work with that group and really got some amazing results. And within six months of working with them, I told him, I said, yeah, I think that's what I want to do, which is probably every dentist's worst nightmare when they hire a consulting group. But I replaced myself and uh, really, so it was about two and a half years after I went to work for him, uh, just took the leap and began to do consulting and coaching full time. But but I did, you know, I hired another office manager and we had to hire another admin. So now there were a total of three because the practice had grown so much. So I just envisioned that I could go and help as I, I laugh, roll my rolling briefcase and or little suitcase through airports across America, spreading the joy of you know, practice improvement, right? And that was almost 25 years ago that I started doing that. So a lot has changed. I've learned a lot. I still learn a lot, but it's it's been quite a ride and and I've loved it. Incredible. Speaking of a ride, I'll tell you right now, ESS Nation, anybody listening out there, you can almost shut this off. And we already have an incredible podcast. So I'm just, we're just getting started incredible. So I want to invite everybody to go to your Facebook page and just, you know, go to Facebook and hit growing your dental business. Okay. Like the page, visit the website and get familiar with Penny. How long, Penny, have you been doing coaching and consulting in dentistry? Yeah, so uh, I'm about to hit my 25th year, which makes me feel a little bit old because I want to say that I started when I was 12, but but I didn't. Uh, so it's um, you know nearing that point. And initially, I worked with a group and had a business partner, and really since about 2001, I have been you know heading up my own company. And just like a dental practice, right, my team is growing, so it's it's been exciting. And one of the things that I promised myself a long time ago, once I became the captain of my own ship, was that there would not be a cookie cutter, one size fits all consulting package or approach. Now, there are certain principles, just like in the dental practice clinically, there are certain principles across all practices that are similar, but every practice isn't the same. And so if every patient came in and got the exact same treatment plan, that wouldn't be good, right? They they would know, well, hey, this is just what they do for every single patient. They're not listening to me. They're not looking at what it is that I really need. So we really work to ask questions, assess where a practice is. And what I found, one of the biggest lessons I've learned is even if there are 50 things that the doctor really wants done differently, you know, 50 different individual results, a practice can really only effectively focus on two to three things at once, right? So just really helping them manage their priorities. Uh, that way things get implemented. You know, I think that's the biggest challenge with any working with any practice management coach. It's, it's not the information because I've got a lot of great friends that are consultants. They're very talented. And at, at the end of the day, most of what we teach is very similar. And I don't think there's a ton that's new that's out there. But the name of the game is, and, and why I love the term coaching, it's the implementation and putting things into practice consistently that separates the successful practices from the ones that struggle or can't seem to get something implemented and keep it that way. Wow. And you know, the word partnership here is huge because People are wondering why Penny Reed is on with us, right? Well, we partner with people who are knowledgeable about the dental industry so that we can also, as EA sisters, be able to tell the story of why we do what we do. And one of those reasons is we want to give the dentist and the doctor their time back, their dental teams 
time back to really make an impact on the patients. And where I'm going with this, Penny, is something that you said earlier about the word cookie cutter, which you try to avoid. And one of the experiences you had was at Walmart, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, At Walmart, they have a back office where they say, you got to go and do some computer training, right? It's great for Walmart. I'm going to, the reason I'm so familiar with that is I'm from the eye care industry. You know, I remember taking a short assignment with Walmart Vision Center in -hmm. that industry. And I had to take some training to be able to go and do my work well. But I used to sit there and say, wait, this training is sort of cookie cutter for the Walmart environment. We need to really identify how this impacts the eye care industry. Now, I know you have a lot to say about that. How do you avoid that cookie cutter approach and say all training is not the same training? How do you make a big impact in dentistry with your consulting and coaching? Really, the term coaching is what comes to mind, and it's the exact same principles that I teach my clients to use with their patients. And I don't know where to go with a client until I find out from them what's most important to them. So, you know, if if you were to visualize, we're all familiar usually with Google Maps or you know, the the Apple Maps on our cell phone. Um, So when you pull up that app, it tells you where you are, right? So when we ask a patient, what brought you here to see us today? Or if I ask a prospective client, um, well, may I ask what what prompted you to reach out or, or what is it that you are, you know, looking to accomplish? Tell me what's going on. That only tells me where they are. And by saying what brought you in today, that tells us where the patient is right now. Only by asking what's most important to you uh, and where is it that you want to go, either to the prospective client for me or to that patient, can I effectively come up with the treatment plan or the practice come up with the treatment plan to move them along that path. And knowing that not only gives me more clarity about the treatment plan and the priorities, unfortunately, just like in dentistry, if somebody comes in and they have a lot going on in their mouth, they may wish that they could leave at the end of that appointment and, you know, finger snap, everything changed. Usually it's a process, the same uh, with coaching. It's a process. And at times along the way, Anything worth doing, there's going to be some frustration involved. But remembering what it is that got them, you know, what motivated them, reminding them, hey, here's here's the end point. And, you know, whether it's the commitment to the systems or even the team, you know, is the team really in alignment? If this is where the doctor or the doctors want to go, we've got to have the team on board in alignment and clear about what that treatment plan is in order to get success. So, you know, I think that's, that's the way for anyone to prevent from, you know, being cookie cutter. And and so with a lot of my clients, you know, I do have a coaching manual and what I used to do years ago was try to take them through Mm -hmm. each and every section. Right. And then what I realized was, well, you know what, we need to hit the areas that are most important to them first. Mm -hmm. And then once we get those things clicking, these other areas that, might help a little, but they're not going to have the biggest impact. Let's save those, you know, until we help them get what it is that they want or if they're in pain. Again, just like a patient with a toothache, we've got to help get them out of pain and and, and where they can breathe, right, and be comfortable before they can really think about, all right, well, now what's your next level of success? And I have offices, I have doctors approach me. Some of them have waited a little too long. Right. Just like that patient where you're thinking, okay, where were you two years ago when this first started bothering you? Now your perio pockets are so bad. There's there's really not a whole lot that can be done other than now we have would have to change the treatment plan. And then, you know, it's it's always more fun, at least to begin with, when an office is already doing some things well and they're just big believers in constant improvement and they're looking to take the practice to the next level because Things continue to change. And I'm a huge believer in coaching. I have a coach. So I think that approach of finding out their values and where they want to go, that's the secret to avoiding the cookie cutter on everyone. That is amazing. And also, I must say that you and I are both into 
heavily into coaching. So Mm -hmm. we had that connection prior to meeting over a week ago. And the other thing that you brought to my memory is that you are big on communication handoffs, Penny, and increasing the communication that yields and increases production. Can you talk a little bit about that? Communication is key because at the end of the day, no matter what technology we have, everything that we accomplish in the dental practice, we accomplish through we accomplish through our team. And the way that the team gets a message from one person to another, whether it's a, a little wind pop on the computer or, you know, they're using their radio or that face to face, you know, uh, delivery of a message, it's it's communication and involving the patient, the true handoff you know, for yes, for our benefit, it is to be sure that the assistant is conveying the best message to the administrative team member. But the real magic happens when we involve the patient in that handoff. Mm -hmm. Uh, If we're simply sending the patient up to the front with a route slip or escorting them to the front and saying, oh, well, here's Andre, he'll take care of you. Mm -hmm. Wow. I mean, we've missed a huge opportunity. That's the time where we're repeating that message to say, you know, Dr. Quintana uh, mentioned to to Susan that she needs a crown on tooth number three, uh, that that tooth on the upper right. And she really she said, you know, time frame, I think, is also important. She encouraged her you know, not to wait until her next six month visit, that that really is something that should be done in the next few weeks because that crack is is pretty significant. So Andre will get you scheduled and answer any questions that you have. And Susan, we look forward to seeing you back here in the next few weeks. So it's very clear. Yes, very clear. I am hearing that each office may have a different culture, a different Mm -hmm. layout, a different style of management. And Mm -hmm. that's where you come in, identify all that, and then you offer the individualized coaching and consulting based on the needs of the practice. Would that be correct? That is absolutely correct. And and I would say that 90 to 95 percent of what I teach is going to be, you know, because there, there are things that just work well. Uh, so it would be similar. The difference would be the priority in which it's taught. Or if an office is already doing, there can be more than one great way to say something, right? There can be more than one effective way to schedule. If the old phrase, if there's something that's not broken, don't fix it. You know, in other words, if they have, a, you know, effective way of scheduling, maybe they block their schedule differently than what I might suggest. If it's working well and they're the schedule isn't stressing them out and they're hitting their targets, then we're going to go to the areas first that need the most attention, you know, whether it's case acceptance or uh, they have a massive, I mean, all the focus is on external marketing and yet the back door is wide open. You know, they have a massive number of active patients, yet every month, you know, if we're uh, calculating for attrition, they may be losing 50 patients or 100 patients. So where are they going? You know, in other words, a general practice, uh, a pedo practice, a perio practice, but especially general and, and pediatric, if we're really working the practice the way that we should be, we should be creating the issue that every couple of years we need another chair of hygiene. Wow. Right? I mean, that, that mm-hmm. should be the problem that we create. If you've got a practice that's been open for 15 years and they still haven't outgrown two chairs of hygiene, you've got a massive attrition problem. Uh, So, you know, just really looking at what's going to best serve uh, this practice as far as what they say is is creating stress for them. And then also the opportunities of what's going to give them the greatest return on investment. I'm all about cash flow. I mean, hey, I've been a business owner now for for 25 years. Stressed out doctors and business owners don't make very good managers of their team or ambassadors to their patient because they're stressed out. So we're always trying to keep in mind return on investment and cash flow and what's going to have the greatest impact financially, as well as sometimes I have doctors that come to me and say, and this happened recently, you know what, Penny, if I don't make another dollar right now, like my, I'm okay with my income, but we are so stressed and none of us are looking forward to coming in every day. And that's not how, you know, if I don't do something about that, 
then we're going to have big issues. Well, if I was only focused on growing the practice, number one, I would frustrate this doctor and team. There may be turnover and they would probably fire me right? Within 90 days, because that's not what they're looking for. They want to know how can we keep doing what we're doing right now and make it enjoyable again. You know, driving the the revenue is not always, even though that is most of the time, it's not always the number one priority for clients that I work with. Penny, I am the feel good, let's do great things guy in our dental office. You have just hit everything right on the button. I am so, so impressed with everything that you have said. And I, and I'm also happy because we are airing this out and there may be a lot of doctors listening to us right now that are wondering, how can I bring this sort of message into my office? Well, it's very easy. You know, Penny, if we are not careful right now, we can go three hours and podcast. Very without- true. <laughs> And I might have some really sad (laughs) clients because I might miss some of their coaching calls. So no, you're right. We will. I'm having a blast. We'll have to watch our time. My goodness. I just want to let you know that we haven't even discussed growing your dental business and market yourself effectively and accelerate your results. What does that mean to you? Can you talk a little bit about that? Absolutely. So in 2015, I published a book called Growing Your Dental Business, which, uh, by the way, is available at pennyreed.com or at Amazon. If you're a Kindle person, uh, that might be a, a great place for you to find it. But as I mentioned earlier, when I asked my doctor, is there any book to tell us how to do this? I wrote the book I wish that I had had. Uh, 20, was it now almost 27 years ago when I went to work for him? And it, it talks about, you know, you have to know your numbers and it lightly touches on, you know, the numbers determine the direction that you may need to work on your systems and train. But the culture is really the foundation. And, and so the book is really not deep into culture, but it does touch on the importance of the healthy work environment and communication. But what I put in that book, put together, and and really these thoughts began swirling around in my mind a little over 10 years ago uh, in 2008 uh, when the, you know, we kind of went through that mini economic crisis that we had and more practices began to participate with PPOs. And I just began to see a lot of doctors that had been in practice for a while get really jaded and, and some of them kind of bitter right? You know, this was not a change that they were looking for. And and yeah, if you participate with plans, you do have to work harder for the same amount of money. And you've got to, you know, change how you do some things, or you need to change some of your marketing so that you can, can stay out of those plans. So the message of that book is there's there's a blueprint, a formula to grow a dental practice by 25% or more. So if, if you're a very self-motivated, self-directed doctor. This is a book that you and your team could go through and even without a coach, make a huge impact in your practice. So, you know, we we think sometimes, oh, we keep running around trying to focus on, well, we need to do this to grow the practice. We need to do that. And it really breaks it down to five. You know, we, we can increase new patients, which is usually where all of the focus goes. And that's only a part of the focus. Increase active patients, increase our hygiene membership, or um, that's my fancy term for hygiene recare. And I use uh, membership, think of a gym membership or the Hotel California, mm-hmm. right, where you can check out anytime you like, but you can never mm-hmm. leave. Yes. We always want you to stay. Increase our efficiency, which is not only smarter scheduling, but ramping up and having everyone on the team really master what it is that they do. Because when everyone is more efficient at the software or CAD CAM, fill in the blank, then we're all more productive. And then last but not least, which is probably the hugest impact, uh, increasing case acceptance. That is the key to working smarter and not harder is getting, you know, finding out what's important to the patients, connecting and engaging with them through the power of questions and intraoral camera usage. If you increase those first four areas, 
by 10% that I, that I mentioned, and then case acceptance only by 5%. And I've run it with a half a million dollar practice numbers, million dollar, $2 million multi-location. I mean, it's the formula is totally scalable. But I think we often think, wow, this is just so hard. It's so overwhelming. We can't do it. Well, it's the little things that add up to the big things. And so getting the team really focused and marketing effectively, everything that we do in regards to communication with the patients is marketing. But the real focus of the book is not on advertising, right? I I say very little in there about social media or any of those areas, because that's a whole, my goodness, that could be a book unto itself. But we talk about getting the team on board. If, If you have a team that's excited to come to work every day, And when they go home, they're a little tired. But as my good friend, uh, Linda Miles, and I, we did a Facebook Live last night. uh, And she says, you know what? You go home happy tired. Mm -hmm. Um, If one of the best things we can do is have a culture where our team loves to be there, they can't help but talk about how much they love the practice. They become ambassadors for the practice. We don't have to you know, beat them into submission every day to ask for referrals um, or go out into the community once a month and deliver donuts, right? And you're not out there begging for new patients. You say, hey, we're out delivering smiles and carbs. And uh, we, we, you know, just kind of make a joke out of it. And we're just out meeting our neighbors, doing things like that, because the world becomes more and more competitive with all of the marketing noise out there. Right. There are pop ups on your pop ups. Um, if you're on Facebook, Google, YouTube. It's just one gigantic interruption. So we, we keep having to come up with the better offer, the more hilarious ad, um, when really what most practices are overlooking is the community that's just right there around them. Um, you know, we want that drive through you know what I'm talking about. We want to set it and forget it, drive through and pick up, pick up the bucket of, of marketing. And then we're done. But with a little intentional effort and getting the team excited, it's amazing. The new patient flow that can be generated alongside your paid efforts. And I think if we overlook the human relation marketing tools, we just spend thousands more every year and our marketing is not as effective as it could be. Penny, our audience right now is wondering, when are they going to talk about e-assist, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I love they're, e-assist. Oh, I'm making, if we were on video, I'm making the little heart, the you little know, heart symbol on my chest. Uh, oh, you know, you know, there's plenty, there's plenty of e-assist coming for you. I promise you, I promise you. But you have made an incredible impact uh, right now on our show because I was going to tell you, okay, so we had our Thanksgiving yesterday for the for the dental office at my office right and you mentioned the quote about the hotel california i i'm big on music and then you live in one of the music capitals of the u.s uh tennessee right that's the state of tennessee very rich i often use another music quote uh which i play often around the office which is jackson brown's people stay just a little bit longer and you know oh yeah Stay. Yeah, I can't believe oh, I just did that. Oh my goodness. That was my, that was my cartoon um, falsetto voice. Yeah. Oh no. No, my clients, um, they're always looking at me and they're thinking, yeah, we really like you, but don't sing. Have I proved to you that you and I can work together? My goodness. I, I, I think we were separated at birth, even though we were born in, in uh, completely different worlds. I think we were. <laughs> this is great, great entertainment. And education as well. My goodness, this, uh, uh, we are right there. We are right there. So we need to bring e-assist nation just a little bit closer. Our doctors listening just a little bit closer to, to get in touch with you. And this is like a perfect time, Penny, for you to share your information so that anyone listening can get in touch with you. Please do. 
Fantastic. Uh, so as I mentioned earlier, um, to get to my website, it's super easy. Uh, you can simply go to www.pennyreed, P-E-N-N-Y, like the coin, R-E-E-D.com. And I want to mention to uh, the ESS Nation listeners here that I would be delighted to do a complimentary coffee talk, which is a 30-minute uh, coaching call. Uh, it's not a sales pitch. And you can fill out the form on the website to request that. And uh, we'll be happy to get you scheduled with that. And uh, if you would like to reach me by phone, uh, probably the best way uh, so that we're not playing a ton of phone tag would be to call our toll-free number, 888-877-5648. And a member of our team can get you connected, find a, a time that benefits the both of us. Uh, if if you're into free resources, which I know I am, um, I also have a podcast by the same title as my book, Growing Your Dental Business. And uh, that's you can find that link on my website or uh, it's also on iTunes. So would love to have you tune into that. And um, I'm just really excited to tell my ESIS story about how I found out about you guys and uh, and why I love you. Is it is it time? I've been waiting. We are going to do it in just a second. Right oh, okay. after. Yeah. Right after we take a short break to tell our friends further about eAssist. We'll be right back. You know your practice is losing money. You just don't know why. Office managers are often overwhelmed with juggling insurances, patients, scheduling, and staff. E-Assist Dental Solutions has the answer. By outsourcing your dental billing efforts with E-Assist, your patients become your sole focus. With E-Assist on your side, you will feel the burden of insurance collections lifted off your shoulders. Visit us at www.dentalbilling.com today to find out more information. So we are back with Penny Reed. Oh my goodness. You, you know, I can tell you're a podcaster. I just made a note that I am going to subscribe today and listen to your episodes. I'm going to go back to the beginning. I'm going to go back because when I do podcasting, I go back and listen to the whole library. So I, I, I really encourage ESS Nation to go back there with me and then we can compare notes. I just want to say something else too about Penny. Penny, this was unscripted. What we have brought to the table today was just simply getting on like a with a good feeling and saying we are going to rock ESS Nation. Would you agree with that? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, and I'm having a great time and I got to sing. And I got to sing myself too, so this is great. Now, how long have you known about ESS? Wow. So probably three years, maybe even a little bit more. And, and I, I'm going to tell on myself if that's okay. Sure. Um, so I had a client ask me about you. That's how I heard about you. And initially my little small minded office manager brain that I had, there's a lot of open minded office managers out there, but I think in some ways, um, I wasn't as open minded as I should have been, uh, when I was an office manager or as a coach, but I thought, how can you outsource, right? I was just thinking small. How could you outsource billing? Right. And I, I said, mm, you know, I, I don't know that much about them. That would be something that I would want to look into, which he did wind up working with you by no help from me. Uh, but but where I really found out about you was I did a seminar with uh, another podcaster and also a dentist, Dr. Chris Griffin. Mm -hmm. uh, we go way back. He had been a client of mine, oh goodness, 19 years ago. And so he and I did a workshop in Destin, Florida, and he uses you guys and uh, you you came and you sponsored. And that's where I met one of your founders. I met Sandy and I talked with you. And, and the more that I talked about it and heard him talk about it, I thought, wow, this just makes sense because there is no school out there to train dental administrators. You know, we have dental assisting schools. We have dental hygiene schools. Now there's some great associations once you become a dental administrator, but there is no place where individuals are going and learning the basics of, of insurance filing and coding and all of these dental specific things. 
And so what I see happening with clients is, you know, people, people move around more than they used to. So, um, and also when with individuals retiring, and that's what caused uh, Dr. Griffin to hire you guys was his, his office manager that knew everything about insurance. And he's in a really small town. She retired and he thought, whoa, how, how do I handle this? You know, how do I do this? And so uh, I'm also a big believer in allowing people to do their genius work, right? Doing what they're best at. So with the patients in the office, the more of our team um, and our admin team that can be focused on the patient that's in the chair or getting that patient that hasn't been in a while back in and not having to worry about the other parts, right? The behind the scenes, the filing of the insurance, the follow-up, the billing, the, the smarter we are. The other thing that I love, um, and I think it was probably Sandy that said this, uh, was, you know, dental team members, uh, many of them get pregnant and take maternity leave, Mm -hmm. right? So you've got to figure out how to cover for that. They take vacations, they retire, they move with e-assist. It's you, you get your system in place there. Things are happening. Uh, you get these emails every day. Um, and I'm copied in on some of my clients' emails. Um, and also every week that are saying, hey, here's what we collected. Here are the claims that we had a little bit of trouble with that we may need to follow up on or, or you know, get some more documentation or narrative. But normally that becomes a minimum after clients are on board with you. And so it's one less thing that the business owner has to stress about. And it's just awesome, right? You don't have the, hey, statements didn't get sent or, you know, this person had to be out for surgery. It happens. And in many ways, it is more affordable because you're not paying payroll taxes on top of it or not having to pay someone extra to fill in. So I am a huge fan of having the eAssist Nation experts take care of that dental insurance, filing, follow-up, and billing. The medical community did it a long time ago, and we were just a little slow to catch up. Wow. Thank you for all of that. One of my greatest experiences, because we became clients of eAssist before I joined eAssist, and I remember we took vacation and more payments came in from insurance than ever, ever that we have done the same amount of time off. And I told my wife, honey, I am so happy that that I found eAssist. It happened really doing just a, a search. And eAssist came into my Google search and I spoke to Michelle Pennington, who leads our sales team, and the rest was history. Mm. So can you talk about the difference that eAssist has made for your own clients? Oh, absolutely. So just like what you were saying, the consistency of not having to worry, being able to, and, you know, especially if you're a solo practitioner, you don't have a partner, an associate in there, and it's stressful enough when you take off, right? You're thinking, okay, well, do I have my patients covered if there's an emergency? And then if the office is closed, deposits aren't being made, claims follow-up may not be being done. So it has improved the collections. And I realize you guys, all of you are smarter than the average dental professional, right? But but just to lay it out there in case we've got some folks that are new to dentistry, what we tend to do in the dental office is we focus on what's urgent, right? It's like this patient's calling, they're upset. We've got a hole in the schedule, we have to fill it. And so a lot of the very important but not urgent things don't get done until there becomes a crisis. In other words, we don't make the time to follow up on that stack of EOBs um, where they needed more documentation or information Mm -hmm. until the doctor says, "Um, excuse me, why are collections down? Or we don't make the time to send out the statements or make those follow-up phone calls for the patients that for whatever reason haven't paid until we often get into a crisis. You know, we're so focused on, there's always something that's happening in the office that's yelling and screaming louder than those areas. 
until it becomes a problem. So cash flow consistency, collections increase, and stress reduction. I mean, I think that those would be the primary things that I see. And and then not having to retrain someone in that position mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. if there's some turnover. And that's when a lot of my clients begin to come on board with the assist is someone does leave the office. And that's when I say, remember <laughs> when we <laughs> talked about this? Yes. Now is the time. Now's the time to do it. And in most cases, they they don't need to replace that person, right? Unless they're running a really, really small practice, you know, and then you you do need to have some, uh, you know, some on-site admin staffing. But overall, it's just a major win. And and I'm a big believer. I recommend you guys to to everyone that I know and and even learned if, if for those that are tuned in. If you're not currently utilizing eAssist and you have not moved to an electronic record, mm-hmm. that would be one of the biggest reasons. I learned something a few months back with a practice that has all of the bells and whistles, but all of their treatment plans, everything is still in a paper chart. So in order to be able to utilize a great company and resource like eAssist, you do have to have your clinical notes need to be in your practice management software, as well as your treatment plans and your x-rays. That way, when they can remote into your system, they've got everything right there. So if you've been dragging your feet about going paperless, stop dragging them. It's time. It's time. And you know, I didn't even touch on the fact that sometimes I wouldn't send out statements because I was not confident about how write-offs were and Mm -hmm. different certain ledgers looked because I didn't want patients all upset with me. But we have time at another period where we're going to be podcasting again to get deeper into dental billing right now because we are getting ready to, to get our roadies to break up the stage. Penny, our clients are more focused when we use Penny Reed Consulting our income and our confidence is a lot happier. How do you feel when you accomplish this day in and day out for your clients? Well, you know, it, it's, it makes it all worth it. Just like any other profession, and, and I'll use the dentist, for example, and I, you know, often I'll ask, okay, you know, if I can ask one of those Oprah questions, what's been one of your biggest unfulfilled dreams since you became a dentist? I mean, nothing is ever the way that we think it's going to be when we're in school, right? Or, or when we're moving along a path. So just like any other career, there are those late nights or more hours than you thought that you would work, or sometimes things don't go the way that you think they will. But when I see not only the dentist, but where it really just warms my soul is when the team gets it. You know, we talk about them being in alignment. Um, The practice starts to, you know, the stress reduction is there. The schedule's working well. We've got the team understanding what it is that they're supposed to do. And the accountability isn't You know, it's one thing if you've got a great office manager, that's fantastic. But if they're the primary ones that are everything has to go through, then all you've done is pass the stress from the business owner to the office manager. And we still haven't really engaged the team. So when that team gets engaged, they start to understand the metrics that make sense. They make commitments about what they're going to do above and beyond their daily duties. Right. Patient reactivation being intentional about looking at unscheduled treatment plans, finding out what's most important to the patient. So I would say not only when the doctors are, you know, the practice is making its numbers, but when the team gets it right and they're, they begin to take some ownership of it. It's the best feeling in the world, right? It's, it's what makes it all worth it. It's what has me, whether I'm flying home from an office or driving home or my office is actually upstairs at my home, I'm coming down the stairs and it's like, that's why I did this. You know, that's, that's why I left the comfort of the dental practice that I worked in and the boss that I loved Mm -hmm. to do this work is to, to make that difference and help improve the quality of the lives of the dentists and the team members, Uh, Because there are better ways to do things. You don't have to be that stressed. True. So true that I'm going to invite everybody to go to another place I just learned about, which is growingyourdentalbusiness.com. My goodness, Penny. Now, we are really at the end. 
And I just want to offer something out there for our listeners. If you have a doctor listening to the show, what is the best advice that you may give someone today that is struggling to take their practice to the next level? So there would be two things, right? Um, if that's okay, because I want to share a, a complimentary thing and then I'll redirect because I think for the return on investment, it's the best thing that you could do out there. The first thing would be the complimentary resource. If you go to, it's a little freebie I have. If you go to attitudeupgrade.com, mm. right? So the word attitude, A-T-T-I-T-U-D-E, upgrade, U-P-G-R-A-D-E, right? Attitudeupgrade.com. And you can download a little poster. Uh, so this has more to do with the how we work together. And I played off of the the word be, you know, like there's mm-hmm. things that we do and then how we show up, how we be. So the B attitudes, right? So if it's a, a little poster that if you don't have team agreements or a team code of conduct that you can download, you can print it, talk about it in your team meeting, hang it back in the break area about how we want to do work together to create that happier environment. The other thing that I would recommend, in addition to reaching out for the uh, complimentary coffee talk, is to get yourself a copy of Growing Your Dental Business, right? I mean, there is a recipe in there for just, you know, we're here at Thanksgiving. If you want to make a great stuffing dish, you need to have a good recipe um, and, and read through it. There are tips and strategies in there that you could begin to use immediately. But ultimately, whether you reach out to me or someone else, I will that you think may be a better fit. I'm a huge believer in coaching. I have a coach. I've had a coach most of my consulting career and I do so much better, not just the numbers, but overall my focus being on purpose when I have a coach than when I don't. So uh, I'm a huge believer in coaching. Well, let's just go back to the beginning of the show when you said you had a client that said, we're making a good amount of money, but we just don't like the way things are going. If that doesn't prove that it's not just about money, that it's how you feel, I don't know what else does it. So something that you really said that I want to highlight before we go, it's how you show up. And Penny, Mm -hmm. I have had now 43 to 44 guests on the show. And sometimes I wonder, I've I've had incredible guests made up of EA sisters, dental consultants, and doctors. And sometimes I wonder, how is this person going to show up so that we can sort of have synergy together, right? Uh, I know they're going to give me the best, but how is the person going to show up? And a lot of doctors wonder the same thing. I was wondering how you were going to show up today. And let me just Mm -hmm. say that it was silly for me to worry about it because (laughs) because you have. I don't know. You know, if you've heard about me, you you might. I'm playing. So you might should have been concerned. Well, you showed up and you've given ESS Nation your best and your best is really amazing. Well, thank you. Thank you. And thank you so much for having me. I have had a blast and I love to talk about the business of dentistry and what we can do uh, to improve the the lives of the dentist and their teams and, you know, just help them enjoy more of the great work that they do. Thank you so much. I want to wish everybody out there a very happy Thanksgiving. Penny, thank you again for coming on the show. And I want to wish you a great week. Wonderful, Andre. Thank you again for having me. Thank you once again to eAssist Nation and our amazing doctors. We want to remind you to give us a rating and a review. And thank you for letting eAssist be a part of your journey. Have a great week, everybody. We hope that you have enjoyed this episode of the eAssist Dental Solutions Podcast. We love to put the spotlight on the individuals for their outstanding work for our clients. 